You know when you're lying in bed at night and you just can't sleep because you're trying to solve a problem with your project car? And then you come up with an epiphany? I like to call these thoughts while attempting to sleep. Or if you like, twits. What? I can't say twits. It's an acronym. On a previous video, I was trying to figure out the front end suspension for the 7R7 project. I thought I had all mismatched parts, but as it turns out, I kind of didn't. Let me show you what I've got and how we're going to get around a certain problem. So here we have the very front of the car. And yes, I did rotate it round. You're not going mad. The lower control arms mount there and there and there and there for the passenger side. Upper control arms mount up here. As you can see, they're in that sort of alignment. I will talk about that later. And here's the parts that all need to go together. One steering hub spindle assembly, one hub, upper control arm, lower control arm, and brake caliper. Now, here was the problem. When I tried to put the hub on, It would only go on about 5mm and then jam up. Now I know you're not supposed to pound these bearings onto the spindles. I know you pound the bearings into the hub, but you shouldn't be pounding them onto the spindle. So that made me wonder, what exactly do I have here? If you also notice this front spindle assembly, it doesn't seem to have a conventional brake caliper carrier. It just has these two big tabs. So I thought I better do some research and find out exactly what I've got because I was under the impression these were from like a, a mid 90s Cougar, but they're definitely not. So that's where the investigation came in. Turns out these spindles are actually from uh, up to 1990 Thunderbird. And it's the only type that had this weird spindle slash caliper carrier. Then once I knew exactly what model it was from, I could figure out the hub size and the diameter and this hub itself. This is the right hub for that spindle, so why is it not going on? Rust. Well, when I say rust, it's obviously been sitting here for a while and it's maybe swollen a little bit, maybe a bit of surface rust, so let's give this a quick a quick sand down and see if the hub goes on. I'm just using a fairly fine sandpaper. You could use fine emery cloth that already comes. I just had to get a sheet of this and fold it up because I want to do this. See you in a minute. with a bit of luck and a bit of oil the hub should just slip right on let's find out Make sure there's nothing interfering in the inside of the hub and the bearing. Fingers crossed. Oh, lovely. Okay, that was epiphany number one. Let me take this back over to the car and we'll go to number two. Let me just throw these control arms on to this side so that I can demonstrate what I'm about to talk about.
So your front spindles, hubs, whatever, sit between this point and there'll be a ball, ball joint in that section. And as you can see, they, they both go up and down, keeping that kind of parallel with that, which I can't do with one hand, or can I? That sort of thing, right? Now, you probably heard of bump steer. Bump steer occurs if your steering rack in our tie rod knuckle is in the wrong place. Now, I mentioned before that this mount is a way out here and that one's a way in there so that they go up and down at, at that sort of uh, dimension. Not sure of the term. Now, the problem is if you're steering rack in our tie rod knuckle is not between there and there like somewhere in that diagonal line like if your knuckle is over here then you're going to get bump steer which basically means when the suspension goes up or down it's going to affect your steering rack it's going to pull it in or out now here's my epiphany people spend a lot of time sourcing just the right steering rack with just the right inner tie rod knuckle distance to make sure it gets in between those pivot point diagonals. Do you know what I mean? But the thing is, you don't have to do that. You can actually use pretty much any steering rack and I'll show you why. As I said before, your steering inner tie rod knuckle pivot, whatever, has to intersect this imaginary line between that one and that one. Okay, but there's absolutely nothing to stop you from changing where these joins are. For example, if the steering pivot that I'm talking about is out here instead of in there where it's supposed to be, then you can basically bring this out, bring the lower ones out, mount them wherever. You can make a bar going across from there to there, mount these brackets and basically make your control arms align to the pivot rather than trying to get the exact right steering rack to align to your control arms. Makes sense? I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong though. I know uh, Tommy, chosen track over in Scotland, he was having an issue with his steering rack and bump steering stuff. I don't know if it's too late for him to change where his uh, control arms mount, but it's worth a shot if he's really struggling. Obviously, you may have issues with your wheel, your wheels being too far out, but you can always make shorter control arms or get different offset wheels to bring the wheels in. There's ways around that, which is a lot easier than trying to get exactly the correct steering rack for the job. This opens up a whole new avenue of possibilities for getting steering in this car. I can choose exactly the one that I like rather than the one that I have to use. You get me? Right, epiphany number three. I mentioned before that I'm using an RX-7 turbo engine, RX-7 turbo gearbox, RX-7 differential, RX-7 rear shafts and RX-7 rear hubs. That's another story. Now, the problem was RX-7 rear hub stud pattern is 5 by 114 or 4.5, which is kind of like Ford, older Ford, maybe new Ford, I don't know exactly. And I was thinking that I would need to get like Crown Vic front end hubs and all that shenanigans because that was the cheapest option. Because... Although these are Ford, they are earlier Ford, and their stud pattern is 5 by 4.25. So here's my cunning plan. Hub adapters. You know those, those uh, wheel spacers that convert a certain PCD to a different PCD? I've ordered a set of, well, a set of two 4.25 to 4.5 one inch wheel adapters. Love them or hate them, I actually quite like them. I've actually got a set on Bugsy at the back to convert his stud pattern. Been working for a year, no problem at all. No vibration, so I'm good with them. 
Oh yeah. So, as I say, not everyone likes them, but that's the way I'm going. I've had success. This has got two benefits, right? I don't have to worry about getting a whole new front end, you know, Crown Vic thing, front suspension, do that, whatever. I can use what I've got. And as much as it's kind of old school, these spindles that I've got, the calipers are just big single pistons, but I'm good with that. The car's not going to have that much weight, so I'm happy enough with the brake setup. The other thing that's really great, I've forgotten. Hold on a sec. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I might have mentioned before that the new wheels that I got for the back are actually really wide. And if I was to bolt them straight onto the rear axles, they would be very close to the frame. If I am enlarging the track at the front outwards, then I can get just a set of normal spacers for the back to bring the back wheels out to keep them in line with the front wheels, which also brings the wheels away from the frame. Two birds with one stone. Very proud of myself, if it works. So we have almost everything we need to assemble the front. I've got my spindles, I've got my hubs, I've got my control arms. There's even nice new ball joints, which need to get pressed into there. However, I am missing a couple of things. I don't have the big nuts that go on there and the washers as well. In fact, I forgot to order the washers. The nuts will be here tomorrow, possibly today. Also, obviously gonna need brake discs, but that's, that's way down the line. At least I can get this all together on the control arms and I could even put the wheels, well, once I get the hubs, I can put the wheels on. So that will be a job for tomorrow. So for today, it is round eight of the PP game. On the last round of the past profession game, I asked if it was a pet photographer, a baker delivery boy, or an exhaust fitter. Well, I was not a bacon delivery boy. My wife, Elsa, was a bacon delivery girl. I was, in fact, a pet photographer. Here's some of my work. As much as I love taking pictures of doggies and, well, mostly dogs, to be honest, it's a lot of work for not a lot of return, so I quit that one. Right, make sure you watch to the end, and uh, I'll put the, the leaderboard up for the leaders. Right, on to this week's round. Was I? A. A party DJ. B. A barista. Or C. A wine waiter. Leave your answers in the comment section below or on the Facebook group Scott Rod's Garage. I did have to update the leaderboard a little bit because I forgot not everyone is watching the videos on the PC and they can't all leave a comment on these videos so the alternative is to leave a comment on the Facebook group. Right, as I say, make sure you leave a comment. We're not even halfway through this little game. So there's plenty of time to catch up if you've not started yet. So make sure you do that. Thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully tomorrow I'll have some more parts and I can start assembling the front and get the wheels on and actually lower the frame onto the wheels for the first time. Well, the front wheels at least. I've still got the back end to sort out. But that's a whole other story. See you in the next one. Bye bye.